Hi everyone. It appears we're in the home stretch of this very challenging semester. I wanted to go ahead and give you an opportunity to watch this session online um, and think about the final steps that any MMJ might need to consider um, when they're converting the content from their legacy platform to the web for people who are going to be reading their stories online and not necessarily watching the video versions. So here are a few things I'd like you to be thinking about. So there are many steps in the process here in the last week uh, as you finalize this last uh, multimedia assignment. First, you want to make sure that you're reading chapter six in your textbook. Uh, I did send out that link Earlier this semester, it is in one of your handouts for our schedule number five, but I will also post it up on Blackboard for you. Second, check out this PowerPoint. Third, I'd like you to look at some of the examples and practice this for yourself. And finally, I'd like you to upload Multimedia 5 by 9 a.m. on Monday, May 4th. That is the start time for our final. We'll talk about when we're actually going to meet very soon, but right now this is going to be uploaded as MM5 by 9 a.m. Make sure that you understand here I am looking for a Word document, uh, not a Facebook page post, um, and you'll be looking for that under assignments in Blackboard. Talk a little bit about the stylistic differences that you can expect in this kind of writing. First of all, very important that headline and focus sentence are key to audience engagement in your stories. So make sure you're including some of the news nugget. Uh, why is this news? What happened that it's a news story today? Um, what's now? What's next? What's in it for me? Think about the meat of the story. If you had one sentence and the headline to grab people's attention, what would that be? Now you want to make sure that you're really careful not to repeat from the headline to the focus sentence. These two things are supposed to build upon each other. Um, you must rewrite the story. Typically we do this in inverted pyramid style. Um, you can't just take your script from your broadcast copy and put that on uh, the website. Obviously there are a lot of things that are there that are a little bit different. Um, we also like to do what we call a 3 2, two one format. This is meaning that we have three sections in the story. You're going to have your focus sentence section. You're going to have two subsections with subheads that help people to skim through a web version of your story. Um, Normally, we might like to have two internal links that put us deeper into the story. So, for example, if you did have a link to the, um, the video story, you could link to that. If you had a podcast uh, version of the extended interview in MP3 format, you could link to that. When we think about these internal links, we're talking about driving people deeper into our own coverage, uh, not asking them to leave our page. So internal pushes people into the um, uh, media organization's website deeper and deeper. It's not considered to be clickbait. It's supposed to unveil the steps to which um, we gathered our media in the field. So um, that's what the internal links refer to. External links are connecting your reader to additional sources or sources that you looked at to help you craft this story. Uh, for the assignment you're going to have this week, uh, you need to have at least one external link. So for example, if you were um, using DHEC data uh, to tell your story, you would want to link to that particular website so people could see the data that you were referring to. And then of course you need a piece of visual proof. This can be either a screen grab or a still photo from your multimedia for project. So MM5, what we're looking to do here is take your MM4 assignment and turn it into a word copy um, and sort of a bit of a reformatting for the web reading audience. So there's a whole bunch of things that we compiled from chapter six of some of the things that you should do that are considered best practices. So here are some specifics for you. So you want to combine all copy into a single page. I would really like it if this Word document did not go more than one page with one inch margins. So that means you have to really tighten up what you're doing. 
Um, you're going to need to reorganize, especially if you did a narrative arc story that started with a personal example or anecdote. Uh, so you need to move that personal anecdote down towards the middle of your copy because really we want to start with the most important information. So you're going to move the top to the middle, move the middle to the top. Think about what subsections um, a, a reader might want and you have to give us a little subhead for that. So um, for example, if you start with a story about um, the university's response to the terrible Zoom bombing for the African American student group uh, last week. Um, you would start with what the university's response was and what happened, and then you would move into how students uh, feel about that, and it would need its own subhead, and then you would move into uh, what the university hopes to do moving forward to protect the learning environment and um, for all classes. Um, separately. So the, each one of those would be uh, its own little chunk of information. So do think about also what links you could use in these subsections. Provide two if possible, one at least for today or for this project. Um, bullet points are good if you can use them. Other considerations, you need to remove all broadcast scripting information, all those double parentheses, talking about what the video shows. Um, you need to change the entire look Right? Everything should be in sentence case, not in all caps. Everything should be flush left. Um, and you can put things together in graphs, kind of like you remember back to 291. We need to put this information in graphs. No more than three sentences per graph. Um, and then we need to add a space between graphs, again, thinking in clumps to help people be able to see what it is that you're doing there. You're going to convert all quotes into traditional AP style, and then you're going to convert everything to AP style. If you can't remember how to use AP style, very important to go to Purdue OWL AP style and not to APA style. That's a, a paper writing style, so AP Associated Press style. You need to remember how to do this because you're going to be going back and forth in your career between AP style for the web and the reader and broadcast style for what you would be doing for your legacy media platform. All right, so um, that's sort of the gist of what you're going to be doing. You're going to be taking MM4 and converting it to MM5 into a Word document. Uh, let me show you an example of how we might see this on CNN. So I'm going to click on over to CNN. So here's a story how the coronavirus pandemic has shaken the U.S. military. So you notice we have the headline and then we also have a really good piece of visual proof. And then we get into the story itself. Okay, um, so then we're going to go down. We're going to read what the story is about. They have a couple of internal links here. We're not going to go do that. Um, they have a couple of external links to be restored to command, was fired earlier this month. This is probably an internal link, All right? Taking you deeper into CNN. Note here, reasons to worry. This is the sort of subhead that I'm talking about. Look at the style of the writing. Do you notice here where everything is in graph form, right? Flush left but with the space in between the graph. You notice everything is converted into AP style. you got to remember how to do those things in your textbook reminds you about that. Here's another subhead, no more business as usual. That's really important. So you notice we have the main section that's up underneath the headline with the visual proof and the main section, but then if you wanted to skim through and find more information, you would find reasons to worry and no more business as usual. And again, here are some more uh, in, internal links for the CNN audience. And the deeper people come into the coverage, obviously the more you make that of interest to them, uh, the longer they're gonna stay with your website and you'll get more clicks. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and escape out of this. I wanna show you an example of what you might be producing. So here's an example of what I would like your Word document to look like. So 
here's the headline, DHEC plans to decrease textiles found in SE landfills, right? Um, so that is our headline. You notice that the first word of every headline sentence is in all caps. If the word is longer than four, then like, so two, you would not capitalize. But if you have more than four letters, you want to put a capital there. SE is South Carolina, so we would capitalize that. Put your byline. That's by Sally Strickland, by Laura Smith. Um, here's our focus sentence. Our piece of visual proof is up to the left. We are inserting a photo in here. And then over here on the right side, you can put as level as possible with the top of your piece of visual proof. You would put your first subhead, and then you notice that the graphs are continuing, I'm trying to make it as neat as possible. And here is our second subhead, right? Uh, this one has a little extra page on it, so we'll go to there and we'll save that so that that looks good. Let's see another example. All right, caretakers in the Midlands hope an Alzheimer's walk draws much needed attention. Here is the byline. Here is the focus sentence. We have subhead one with the most important information. Subhead two, and in this case, you had a third uh, subhead with details about how you could get involved in the event. And then here is an internal link, um, or I'm sorry, this is an external link, so that um, people who want to find out more can go ahead and click over there and, and learn more about that. So um, the other uh, question you might be asking is, how is this going to be evaluated? And here's basically what we're going to do. Um, does it have the general requirements? It needs a headline and byline. You need to co combine everything to a single page. You need to follow the 3221 format. Uh, you're not required to have any internal links for today, although if you would like to link to the Facebook page for your MM4, that would be great, um, since we do have that up and available to a public audience now. Uh, two external links connecting your reader to additional sources. Um, at the minimum, you have to have one. You do have to have a piece of visual proof. It should be in the top left under the focus sentence. So headline, byline, focus sentence, visual proof, first subhead. Uh, here are the writing conventions that we've talked about, right? And so these are the things you're expected to do for your basic performance and then quality points are for how well you're able to accomplish these things. Sorry, that would be the um, gist of what you're going to be doing between now and finals. So you're also going to need to um, do writing assignment number three. That is also up under um, assignments on Blackboard. And um, that's just a basic overview of what we're going to be doing to uh, finalize the semester. If you have any questions for me, please make sure that you reach out and uh, I will do everything I can to make sure that you have what you need uh, for these last assignments in the class. All right, um, that's it for this tutorial. And again, please email me or reach out if you need to.